Hello everyone, my name is Rob Barrett and I write for the Arc Photogrammetry uh, blog and today I want to show you how I personally make uh, 3D models and 3D reconstructions um, because I feel it's much simpler than people imagine so if I show you how I usually approach a model then maybe you'll feel inspired to do yourself. Um, what you have here is the first model I ever made. Um, this is a model of the Parthenon. I have to say, looking back at it, there's a lot of stuff I would have done a bit differently. Um, but what I'm going to do today is I'm going to remake this from scratch and show you what I would do to do it. Um, as you can see, uh, this took me about 70 hours. I think I can probably do it much quicker now. Um, also, just to note, just to point out, I won't be doing it particularly accurately. I just want to show you the methodology, uh, not necessarily um, actually make a good reconstruction. Um, so to start off, uh, I'm using uh, Google SketchUp. This is the pro version. I think uh, the normal version will um, do you just as fine, but do let me know in comments and stuff if um, the normal version doesn't work as well. Um, just to give you an idea of how this software works, we will be basically creating squares and lines and surfaces. Um, but before we even go into that, I need to show you navigation on this piece of software. Um, first of all, you can see what I've got here. This, this two button here is the rotate view. You click and you can basically change the view. Um, here you've got a pan which just moves the view left and right and up and down. The zoom which just goes in and out but I usually zoom with my mouse wheel um, and that's it. Uh, that's, that's the buttons that you will need to sort of navigate and I'll be going through them while making the model. Um, there is shortcuts but I don't really use shortcuts myself uh, but you're free to use them because they're very very useful. Okay so um, so this is this is specifically for 3D modeling for archaeology. Um, so uh, they will, we'll be following certain conventions and certain things. First of all, I always like to start my 3D models with a plan. Uh, let me just see these as large icons. Here you go. So before I even do a 3D model, actually, I do a lot of research about what the site was like. Um, I comparison with other sites, uh, archaeological excavation reports, every piece of information I can find uh, regarding the archaeological site, I will go through it and make sure that I'm uh, familiarised with the uh, archaeological information behind it. Um, for today, I won't be showing you that side of it because it's long and boring and it, you know, everyone works differently. So, um, you know, do your own research, but it is important to basically go and make sure everything is as accurate and, and carefully planned as possible. But today I'm going to show you just the rough and ready way to do it. So uh, do not copy exactly what I'm doing, just get the methodology out of there and, and then apply it to your own projects. So um, when I do a 3D model, I usually just start with a plan. So what you can do is you can drag literally uh, an image into Google SketchUp. And then if we, as you can see, it's just there. Uh, this person is just for reference, by the way. Yeah, we won't, we'll delete her in a minute. Um, so that's our plan. As you can see, the plan is much smaller than what it should be. Uh, it would be a miniature Parthenon if we did that. But my plan has a scale, so I'm gonna cheat a bit. and I'm gonna do a, a rough scale. So what I will do is I will measure from here. This is a measuring tool. So that's a 10 meter scale, so we'll measure 10 meters from here. If you can see in the bottom, either bottom left or the bottom right, depending on plugins and stuff, um, we can measure 10 meters. Uh, come on. There we go, 10 meters exactly. So that's our guideline. And then what I'll do is I'll rescale this image. Now there's a button, da, 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 this one here, which is scale. Also, if you press S, it will do it as well. Um, so we want to resize this until it fits upon that line. Oh, this may take, it's maybe much larger than I thought. Um, so yeah, so we rescale and rescale. And then once we've got enough, we've got a move tool, which is this one here, these four arrows. So we move the move tool around. And we basically want to get that point there. Okay, so we're still not large enough because that point there is 10 meters from here to there. 
and we're not there yet so we're gonna press s again and rescale a bit more that maybe would be looking a bit better and again we move it back onto the thing this is just a long oh not big too big now uh this is this is just um it's good to get it as accurate as possible obviously because um scale is very important in archaeology um there is other ways to do this which makes it more accurate but i just want to again this is the rough and ready way to do it essentially okay so that looks like it's to scale uh i'm now going to recenter this to make it better there we go and again this is the, this is the rotate view tool okay look at that it's massive okay now so the way SketchUp works is by using lines and squares and various types of geometry. Now, um, these tools here, this is the shapes tool. You can have a rectangle, circular, or polygon. Um, if you use rectangle, for example, let's show what happens. We'll make this lower level here. Da -da 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 -da, do that, and you get a square. Very nice, isn't it? Um, so that's that's nice and simple. If you've got a circle, for example, now circles are a bit of a nightmare in SketchUp. If you're using a different piece of software, they may be a bit better, uh, but just to show you what it's like, you do this and you get a circle, for example. Okay. You can also just, you know, press and then write in, you know, 30, and that will give you a massive radius. Uh, and that's the radius. You just write in how big you want the radius to be. Um, the one I use most, to be honest, is this one, which is the lines tool. And that's because you can do squares, and squares are fine, but if you're doing, for example, here, you don't like, it's difficult to do a square. So what you can do is just have a line, and do a line, and do a line, and then do a line again. This is very rough, but you get the idea. A line, a line, and a line here. Uh, whatever, we'll do it halfway through. Here, here, uh, like that. And you've got it. Also, you may notice that when you finish off a line, when you join to, to the start again, it creates a surface. So this is now a separate surface. Okay. So, um, so that's something. Um, so, I think the simplest thing is probably to actually make this into a surface at the moment. So, we'll start off with a rectangle tool to give you a good example. And we'll do that. Also, I, this is a select tool. And I'm going to select the, rect the inside of the rectangle, okay? And I'm going to delete it. Now, the reason for that is that it will keep this line around it, but I can see the map underneath it again, okay? Um, if, I'll go back a second. So if you've got this surface, if you click it once, it will just select the inside area. But if you click it twice, it will select the border as well. So if you delete it now, uh, there won't be any, any line left. Um, okay, so we'll delete that and then we'll make another one for these steps all the way down here done and then we'll delete it again oh dear I press the wrong button uh oh no what am i doing uh yep yeah, press that one delete it uh we'll do another line here what's that that's meant to also we can probably if you do that if you if you deleted the surface, by the way, if you press from a corner from inside and the corner from outside, it usually, it should remake the surface, but I think we've done something slightly wrong. So let me just check. Is that elevated? No, that's not elevated. Okay, I'm just gonna redo this line again. Okay. Ah, oh, so something's happening here. It's basically, uh, so this is something that SketchUp does every now and then, so it's worth noting. If you start doing um, squares within squares or lines within lines, sometimes it will do this, where this surface is meant to be separate from this surface, but it joins them together. Uh, I find that the easiest thing to do is just to delete the surface in between, because it's probably just slightly higher or something odd's happened. And then you re-delete this, and we redo that surface. And now, what's happening here? Or well, we can delete this surface and redo that. Let's see if that works. 
There we go. There we go. Now they're separate. Okay, let's go back into it. Um, there's another surface here. Great. Oh, but that's not joined together again. Yep, there we go. And then we've got this one here. Like that. Uh, yeah, so it seems like you need to redo the one before. Like that. Whoops, what's happening now? There we go. Uh, and okay, so now we're at the inside area. And this is where we start to use the line draw. So with this line, we will then basically we want to get a line which is parallel with this. So if, as you can see, it turns red. And the reason it turns red is because we're following basically this line here going from all the way down here. That's the red line. If we're going this way, for example, it may turn green. And that's because we're following this line here. And if we're going basically upwards, it will turn blue. Okay, so this is following the guidelines, but sometimes you'll have the model rotated and therefore you can't use the guidelines. But what you can occasionally do is you can follow, um, basically it will give you a pink line and that's basically copying the same direction as a line which is nearby it. Uh, but we don't want to do that at the moment. For now we're just following the guidelines because it, it is centered in a way that it would um, it would work just by following guidelines. So uh, again, quite rough and ready at the moment. I'm not doing anything particularly accurately. Um, I know this is quite bad practice. Uh, if you get something wrong, just press Z, uh, Control Z, and it go back. Um, yep, yeah, and then we go up here, and we go down here, and then we go up here, and then we go down here. Then we go. Oh yeah, that doesn't quite join up. So I'm gonna. So sometimes it won't quite join up and then what you do is you do a longer line across you then delete this last line this is just sort of tricking it into doing it properly and then you go across and there you go you've done it and you can delete the little line more there we go um fine we'll do the columns in a minute um and i'll show you why later because curved lines are a bit more of a nightmare so now, if you see here, we create lots of surfaces. We've got that surface, this surface, this surface, um, this surface, this surface, and this surface. So what do we do now? Now it's literally still just 2D. Um, now we're going to use the push-pull tool, and this is a tool which um, we'll, we will use a lot during this um, tutorial. Uh, what does the push-pull tool do? Uh, we basically use it to extrude surfaces. So if I were to pull it here, see what it does? It lifts up that entire surface and it creates a box using it. Um, so that's very good. What we're going to do is we're going to, so usually you do this, you'd measure each one. Again, this is very rough. Um, so we do that and we do that. See, we're creating some steps slowly. And then we do that. We want to lift it up a bit higher. And then this is going to be like that, and if it's a bit higher, even, and then we're gonna get this last one, um, and just pull it. This is gonna be much higher. Okay, see, see what it's like. We got steps. We got an inside area. This is the inside. Uh, lo there's lots of different rooms in here. Uh, it's looking quite interesting already. Um, now one of the things I want to do is first of all correct a few little things. So for example, this surface here isn't necessarily in line with this surface. So what I do is I'm going to push pull this. You can see you can go up and down and push it to here. See what I mean? I've clicked on this surface and then I drag it across to the other surface and it will make it the same length essentially, which is what we need. And the same for the inside here. Uh, it's, just, it's just making it a bit nicer really. Um, it will make it look a bit better really. Um, and then we do it for here as well. Done. Okay, so we've got a very rough model now. Um, the height of these walls, I had it somewhere. Let me just check. I have, um, this is uh, an article I read which basically gives you the dimension of the Parthenon. Um, so we need something with height. I'm gonna just uh, search height. Height of columns, height of individual column. 
Da, 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 da. Um, when I first did this model, I, I followed this guide to the letter, just, you know, um, it's worth doing, but I don't really want to spend the time. Uh, I'll just use what the height of the column is, which is meant to be 10.4 meters. Okay, so what we can do is, so, you know, this push and pull tool, um, this will also give you the height. So if we go back to normal, if you see underneath here, or it will be appearing here, it gives you the height. So if I pull it up, it will say average 10.4. There we go. So that's what the height would be of that part. Okay, so we've got a very basic um, background of what's going on. Um, now, ideally I could work from the ground up. And what I usually do is I do a rougher model at first and then I will add a load of detail later on. Uh, the current model I'm working on at the moment, I've, I, it's the fourth time I do it. Like I've done the very rough model at first, then I did one which is a bit more accurate, sent it off to the people who actually excavated the site. They sent back a lot of uh, information. I remodeled it and it keeps on going like this. Um, so don't add too much detail to a model at first because eventually you're just gonna end up um, having to redo it and redo it and redo it, which is not what you want. Okay, so this is the first uh, thing. So we're gonna create a column. Now to do the columns, what I would recommend is to do something which is uh, which is called a component. Um, so what you could do is you could uh, do a circle here, for example. Uh, that's, that's very bad, I'll do one closer. I need to get in the right place. Uh, say, say that's your column and you can lift it up, right? Fine. I mean, that's massive, whatever. Um, but if you were to then try to move this, right, we'll, we'll basically, look what we'll do, we'll go like this and we'll select with this one. We'll do a little box and we'll select. If you go deep down, low enough. Okay, so you've got your column and if you try to move that now, it will be fine. But you know, there's lines coming off it and basically it's mixing with the geometry. And if you, for example, um, made a copy of this by selecting the move tool and creating C and you moved it here and then you try to move this look it just it just gets in the way of each other basically and you, you don't want that to happen because look that's a nightmare um, so what we'll do instead is create what's called a component now component is is something I didn't discover um, till later on in my modeling process and by god if it's helped me throughout Okay, so what we do is we basically create, uh, actually what we'll do is we'll first of all move this out so we can see how big we want the column to be. So we go from here to here, roughly, we'll move it slightly more towards, I'd say that's, that's the rough size of the column. Um, right, so that's what we want. Um, then we want to obviously push and pull it, so we'll pull it up. Uh, what was the height? 10.4? Yeah, that's good for me. I can actually write that when I'm doing it. Um, if I click the extrude and press 10.4 and I press OK, it will do it automatically. So there you go, you've got like a very, very rough column. Now, in order to make this easy to copy, We'll basically double click on it, so you select all the entirety of it, and then right click, and there's something called Make Component. And then you press Create, and it does this, right? So look at it, it's now a solid block. And if I were to copy this over and over again, and put it over each other, right, again, uh, let's try that again, it didn't quite work. You know, something like that. And then I try to move it again, look, it moves it without actually distorting it because it's its own individual entity and every geometry which sort of intersects it it calculates it as a separate entity um, so this is this is very good because it means that you can then modify the model very easily change around stuff do whatever you need to do with it and it also means you can hide stuff very easily so one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to make um, this into component create and then if you right click here, it says hide. So that makes that completely disappear and you can then work onto this again. Um, so now we'll make a column again. We'll do this. 
Um, and we're going to put through this to um, oops, yeah, 10.4. Right, so that's the height of our column. Um, and I'm then going to copy and paste this all across to make it easier for us to work with it. So we do this. As you can see, I'm copying it onto the green line. If I only did it properly. So in a second, something's not quite right. Ah, yeah, we didn't do component on this, did we? Uh, so we create it, and then we can drag this oh dear, um, from here to here, and then why don't we get both to make it quicker, and then we drag these two from here to here. So all we're doing right now is just copying and pasting, so this one needs to move a bit more to the left. Right, uh, and then we copy these two, so to copy, I'm pressing Control and the Move tool. And then I'll just drag it across. Yeah, so the Parthenon, the columns are not evenly spaced. It's something that I remember. Um, so it's always a bit, they're not quite right. Okay, so we got the first colonnade. Yeah, that looks nice, doesn't it? Um, then we're gonna make um, this, these sides. So we go from here, we select that and go like that. And then we select these two and we do the same. Uh, this one needs to be moved a bit. Then we grab these two. Oops, I didn't press the copy. Uh, I know this, this, this is the boring repetitive part, but you know, it's slow. Our puffing on is slowly coming along is important part uh, these two get to be moved more uh, like this oh, that was nice uh, then we copy this over here and this over here and these ones over here and finally these ones over here and this one needs to be moved a bit um, there we go. Okay, second colonnade. Uh, what we'll do now is we'll just select. Um, so if you if we do this tool again, we can select the entirety of those and just copy them over to the other side. So we don't. Oh dear, we've selected things as well. So what happened there is that we'd also selected the image at the bottom. As you can see, it's been selected. So what you can do is you can press Shift and click on it, and it will deselect that particular part. Um, so we'll drag from here. To here, oh dear, they're not quite right, so this one needs to move a bit, for example. Um, if this was uh, if the columns were perfectly um, placed, then we wouldn't have that problem, but because they're uneven, then obviously that causes issues. So these can all come over here, and that'll do. That looks fairly decent, doesn't it? Look. We've got uh, the connects and then we can go to uh, edit and hide all and we've got these coming up again. Um, so what we'll do now is we can lift all these columns up. So if we basically select everything and then press shift in the middle and shift here, we can then lift these up so that they don't touch the floor, they touch the floor of our thing. And what you can do is you can actually press that corner See, so it's following a blue line, so it's going downwards directly, and it goes onto the face, so there's no division between the two. Okay, so there we go. Look at that, it's really coming along. Uh, we've got the columns, we've got uh, the middle part. Um, there's more stuff that needs to be added in, of course, there's more columns here, there's columns all the way in the inside. We'll do that in a second. Um, we're gonna start adding some detail now. So. The columns aren't, you know, nice smooth columns. If you look at the images, and I always have a lot of images handy um, to see what I'm doing. If you look at some of these, um, it's going to open it. Uh, that's not a good image for it. Um, but essentially, the columns have got striation. I think that's the word. There we go. Got those lines there. So we're going to add some detail 
um, by modifying these columns. Now, the good thing of using com components is that if you modify one of the components, it modifies them all. So this column here, we're gonna, as you see this one, we're gonna change this one, but if we change this one, every other column will change as well. So that's something to keep in mind because one thing you could also do is you can make unique. Uh, if you right click and make unique, that means that that's then separate from everything else. And sometimes that's more useful. But in our case, because these columns are all the same, um, it's worth keeping all these components connected. So we'll click on this one. And what we will do is we can to create a pattern. So we go on to it and we're going to get uh, the arch tool. Uh, is it the arch tool? Yeah, two point arch, two point arch. And then we click from here to here, for example, and drag it in a bit. Okay, see what I'm trying to do? Uh, from here to here, and we drag it in a bit. I mean, these, these we, can, we could use these better, really. Uh, let's actually measure them to make them a bit better. So that's, uh, let's put 0 0.3, enter. Oh, that's way too large. No, 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 no. Let's put 0 0.1, too small. Okay, um, this is just, I'm just eyeing it in. Again, you probably wanna do a bit more research on this. That's still gonna be too large. Uh, I'm gonna put um, 0 0.15. There we go, that's probably what we want. And then we do again, 0 0.15. That didn't really work. 0 0.15, enter. Uh, do this all the way across, which obviously will take a second. Uh, there we go, and then, oh dear, what am I doing there? 0 0.15, enter. 0 0.15, enter. 0 0.15, enter. 0 0.15, enter. Okay, this, this, is, this will nearly be done in a second. Um, well, as you can see, this is an important thing. On the other, con on the other component, we're also getting those lines appearing. Um, so, to modify a component, you basically um, just have to click, double click on the, on one of the components, and it will modify everything for every component that you have. And that's a great tool. Point fifteen, and we got our last one from here to here. 0.15 done all right so that's our column it's still not done but what we do now is we select the push and pull and we pull that one down okay and then we pull it set that one and pull it down and then we select that one and pull it down and as you can see it sort of automatically goes to the bottom we'll do that and we'll do that and we'll do that okay and we will do this one here and 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 this one here okay look at that looks more like columns i think to be honest i think that's probably a bit too extreme i think we need um less but because again this is a very rough thing we'll just leave it as it is look at that isn't that looking nice Okay, so we're gonna continue building upwards. Um, so we've got our base, we've got um, these columns. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make a little capital for these columns. Now, th this is where our problems start to arise because unfortunately the piece of software you're using is not fantastic at doing curved surfaces. Now, I'll show you what we're going to do. Um, we're going to make a little capital so um, let's see what it's meant to look like. Ah, that's good. Okay, so then but nice and simple, it's just two round surfaces. So we're going to do a rough thing at the moment. We're just gonna make something here aside so it doesn't uh, interact with any other geometry. Um, so we've done that and then we're gonna protrude it a bit up like that. Okay. And um, hmm, what's the best way to do this? Let's think. Let's see, let's see what they look like again. So they've got a little bit of a 
thing going up first and then they protrude outwards. So I'm going to, um, let me fix, I'm going to do that first, give it a little bit of a protruding thing. Um, then I'm going to make, uh, okay, that doesn't work. How am I going to do this? A lot of it, a lot of this modeling is basically working out what's the best solution um, for this, for what you're trying to do. Uh, so I'm going to actually, oh, damn it, I've completely deleted it. So let's say that's the, uh, more or less the height we wanted that. Yeah, I know. Um, so that's, that's the thing. What we're going to do is we're going to now select the top. Okay, and we're going to use a scaling tool to our advantage. Now, unfortunately, as I said, Sketcher doesn't work very well with curved lines. So this is not going to look very appealing, but once you've um, put a text on it and rendered it, it'll be, it will look better. If you want to do a lot of curved surfaces for your model, you're probably better off using software like um, 3D Studio uh, Max and that kind of stuff. But for the purpose of what we're doing here, we're going to just sort of cheat our way through it a bit. So we've selected the top surface only, not the entirety of it like that, just the top. And we're going to use a scale tool. Okay, so look what happens if I try to pull the scale tool. Okay, it's basically transforming the this surface here. And that's already looking pretty good. We'll do it a bit more accurately though. Um, I did that very badly. Um, so we'll scale, uh, let's say 1.20 that way, 1.20 that way, 1.20 this way, 1.20 this way. Okay, see, it's not looking too bad. Um, I was also noticing there's a bit of a return at the top, so it goes out and then it returns in a bit. So uh, we're gonna try and simulate that. Again, it may not work, um, so we're going to lift it slightly up, very slightly. Um, um, we could try putting that in a bit, but that's going to come out too straight. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going, mm, <laughs> this is the problem of this kind of stuff. You need to try and work out what the best solution is. And it's not always um, the, the simplest one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide, I'm going to trick it slightly to bring this as a different surface by protruding it slightly inwards by 0 0.99. And then we're going to do this on 0 0.99, 0 0.0. So if you notice something, all we've done up to now is use, you know, solid surfaces, changing them a bit, you know, adapting them for our use. So there's nothing too complicated at all. And what we're going to do is we're going to extrude this now, a bit less really, and we're going to pull this one in as well. Um, and that's sort of just giving it a bit of an extra dimension. We'll go for, let's go for 0 0.9. And then we use this one, go for 0 0.9. And we do this one, go for 0 0.9. And we do this one, go for 0 0.9. There we go. So. Our capital's looking okay. I wouldn't say it's the best one I've ever done, but for the purpose of what we're trying to do, it will be fine. Also, I don't know why these have gone upwards, so we'll delete them. Um, okay, so that's our capital. We're going to click on it and we're going to make component. You see, so now it's uh, it won't cause any problems. We're going to lift it and put it on top of one of these. Now, as you can see, it's much larger than it's meant to be. Um, so we're going to scale it down a bit. Let's do that. And we'll move it across. I have to be honest, it's not the nicest one I've ever done. And I think that if I were working on it properly, I'd probably redo it. Um, but again, just because I'm, you know, you just apply the same methodology, so there's no point in me um, showing you again. But just, you know, it's good to try and get a good good amount of detail going if possible. Okay, so that's our capital. Okay, that doesn't look too bad from a distance, actually. Um, so what we'll do now is we're going to copy it across. I think that's probably better. We could theoretically copy this into this component. But I actually want to keep this separate from this 
um, for a number of reasons. Um, just because I don't want to... Actually, that would be fine, I think. Uh, so I'm going to basically just X, Control X, so that's copy and uh, that's cut and paste. So we're then going to go Control V, and there we have it. So double clicked into the component. There we go. Just for just for quickness reasons. There we go. Now all of our columns have a little capital. Um, another thing that is worth doing actually is um, these columns are not meant to be just straight lines. They go from the bottom is larger and the top is meant to be um, a bit more, can't I say, confined. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on it. I'm going to select the entirety of this. Actually, I'm going to hide this a second. Select all of this. I'm going to do the same for the top. Let's go. Oh, no, that's not doing what I wanted to do here. No, there's one of these buttons which is worth doing, but I can't remember. That just does that. I've unhidden it. Ah, dear. this, okay, we need to select that. That's what the problem is. There we go. So now we want it, say, 0 0.9. Let's just give it a bit of a... We don't want it to look bad. We just want it to be a bit more... Um, Accurate, 0 0.9 and 0 0.9. And then we want to edit and hide last. There we go. And then we probably want to rescale this a bit as well. Um, so if we just do 0 0.9 on that, will that do it? Yeah, and then we just need to reposition it slightly. All right. Now look at that, look at that, that's looking nice. Uh, this may be a bit too high, I'm just wondering that looks a bit flatter doesn't it on the top, so I'm going to go and flatten them a bit, just so they nicer. Um, so it's just trying to get the proportions right, and again you can, you can waste a lot of time measuring these and doing it, but for the purpose of what we're trying to do, it doesn't matter. Okay, that look, that, that's fine isn't it, that looks quite nice. Perfect. All right, so we've done those. What's probably the next step? I think we need to add columns inside. I think that's probably um, what we should move on to next. So we'll hide this again. So there's columns in here, columns in here, and columns there. Now, if I'm not mistaken, these columns inside are yeah, they're like double sets of columns. So there's a small column and a small column on top of each other. Um, so we'll do both of those. We'll do, let's do the outside ones first because that's the easiest ones. So what we do is we obviously select some of the columns we already have. Um, for these ones we can do that and then we can copy them from here to roughly here. Now, as you can see, unfortunately, they're floating a bit because of the way we're doing them. Um, so they won't be. So it's difficult then to you have to go on top view to see if they're accurate in place. So I think they need to come a bit more inwards. So this will go a bit more that way. Um, this one will come a bit more inwards like this. And I think these can go a bit more as well. We'll readjust them once we put the other part in, but at the moment I think that will that will probably do. Actually, that's too much. Really, that way it is. Okay, so we've added a second set of columns. Now these will also be smaller columns, so we'll deal with that in a minute. Um, let's just get them. Um, One thing I may do actually is I'm going to unhide the last so and hide this and actually this is starting to become a bit of a problem because I sort of need the space but I really don't need this top thing um, in the way oh don't show me too bad um, okay let's just leave it for now and it'll be fine so with these four we need to select the four and essentially we want them um, we want the space to be higher 
because as you can see this the, the underground technically uh, then we want this one to go down to the surface or they're ready on the surface let's see now you see they're slightly floating um, we just need to get them to go down a bit more like, like so I mean I could spend ages doing that purely, but again um, right so now they're a bit high um, so we're going to rescale them to get them to the same height as these um, and that will also make them slightly smaller so there we go that's that's a bit better okay um, then let's hide this one again um, so you have to basically do this process over and over um, which is you know just it takes a bit so these four in the front we'll copy them over Oh well, to be honest, we could just copy these, which are ready to size, so that'll be easier. Go from here like that, all the way across, and then a bit more. There we go. That's that was done. Um, okay, inside ones. I think these four are meant to be actual just columns. Um, so we'll copy those in. Um, maybe if we get these smaller ones, these should be a bit better. So we copy them from here all the way to here and then once again uh, let's see them from the yeah you can see they're slightly out of uh, where they're meant to be so we'll copy this a bit forward and that one needs to go a bit more outwards and this one can go a bit more this way and what's up with these two? I think this one needs to go a bit more that way. And this one needs to go a bit more this way. Okay. Columns. So those are all done, the inside ones. Um, now we need to do these small ones. And these small ones are going to be the interesting ones. Um, so how many are there? There's three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, so what I'm probably going to do is because that seems pretty even I get edit and hide last again so we got that um, so first of all let's look at that that looks quite nice okay um, now we're going to copy 10 columns into there so we're going to go for one two three four three four five six seven eight nine ten okay so we're going to copy these from here what I think I may do is I'm going to yeah I'm going to copy them away first of all and then I'm going to make them into a component correct so that's going to be easier to work with now we're going to grab from here and I'm going to put them into here now obviously this doesn't look right because they come all the way across because they're too large um, so we're going to make them much smaller and we're going to make this work for us so because they're half the size i think if we were to half the entire column i think that would probably work for us so i'm going to press size and i'm going to grab this one here and i'm going to press 0 0.5 and press ok now that looks a bit too close knit but maybe height wise i think we're okay um let's give it a look so if we give it a bit of a twirl like that i think height wise that's fine so what we need to do is just extend them a bit um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna hide this again. Go into this component, and I'm going to make sure these are properly placed. Um, what I'm actually going to do to make this is I'm gonna put these back onto the ground um, because that's going to be easier for us to move them around for now, and then we can raise them up again in a minute. So let's just space these out um, as much as necessary. We're gonna still do it on the, that red line. Um, so that we know exactly where they're going. They seem to be a bit smaller than what the base suggests, but we'll, we'll be fine for now. There we go. And then this one here. There we go. And this one here. There we go. Um, this one here. Right, we're getting there slowly. All right, so 
So that's our first colonnade. Then what we can do is we can so I'm out and copy this cross. Uh, so if we go forward like this, and we go here, and we put this here, there we go. We've got the colonnades. Now if we unhide uh, last, and we select um, these two, we can then raise them up um, to the height that we actually need them at. So if we go uh, following that blue line, the blue axis line, There we go, that's done, that's good enough. Okay, perfect. There we go, that's our first colonnade. Now, if we look at um, this model, not this one, where is it? The photograph I was looking at, this one here. Um, okay, that's, that's not what I wanted, there we go. So there's a little colonnade around it. Oh, there seems to be two columns at the back as well, which don't seem to be in the plan. Um, but we'll add those in just to make it as realistic as possible. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy one of these and take it out of the um, out of the composition, out of the component, and then we're gonna actually first of all let's go for yeah. Oh dear, what am I doing? Oh no no no! I messed it up. Uh, let's try it again. So copy and then exit exit um, and then we do control, control B what? what have I done uh, I can't seem to do it properly okay I'm gonna try this once more copy and then we go out and then we go V there we go well I'll just put them in now and then we can deal with them later and then again we copy over here right okay so that's looking okay um, so we saw in the thing that there's something going across them as well. Um, so let's just create some blocks. Now there's two ways we can do this. We can either do it block by block. And in a way we could probably do the columns by block by block. Um, all the way across, all the way across, all the way across. Um, and that's useful. So for some things it basically helps you to realise how they were built. And it can be very useful for interpretation. Um, or you can just do a solid block around and when you render it it won't be much different I think I'm going to just do one solid one for just just because it'll be much simpler okay so how do we do that so essentially it's just pulling and pulling pushing and pulling a surface so we're going to make a square uh, on this surface now because this is a component that's not gonna inter it's not actually on the thing it's two different surfaces in theory um, so if we pull it out nothing bad happens so we'll pull this out to here now that's obviously first of all too low so we're going to correct that um, by pulling this up oops what have I done I'm not sure let's go back just to be sure uh, we select that surface and then we pull it up till about let's say there um, it's also I think a bit too high if we look at that image yeah it's a bit lower so we're going to um, lower it down a bit so we select this push it down I think that looks pretty accurate really um, based on that reconstructed image um, so we're going to then go down here and we're going to protrude this as well so we're going to make a line coming across here following the blue which means it's a straight line and then we're going to select this point and put it across like that maybe put it a bit down as well like a bit in there we go um, actually it's a good point I think this line's a bit too far out on this side so we'll do that as well perfect and then last but not least okay just to give it a bit more of that um, accuracy uh, I'm gonna just measure how far this is across that's about 1.32 meters and then if we draw a line we can do it in 132 so that's 130 I'm gonna write it down 132 enter 
there we go that's done and then we pull this all the way from here across to this point all right let's look at it yeah that's coming along isn't it right so uh, I'm gonna make that into component as well create and actually I'm going to make the entire thing into component because I'm going to use it in a minute so we need to select that that that, that and that and we're going to make this into a component as well so if you were to click into this by the way you get this is the first level component and you look and you got this other thing and you got this other thing and this is a component in itself so you click in that and then you got other components within it um, so it's just sort of layering different things so that they don't cause problems with one another um, also this has got two levels so we're going to just copy and paste this on top so we're going to go like that and we're going to copy the entire thing up to here where's the blue line where's the blue line when you need it that that's fine Ooh, maybe not uh, we push a bit more this way maybe to make a bit more oh dear there we go or maybe a bit backwards really okay um, so obviously this is a bit too high now uh, so we need to put it down so we're going to uh, reshape it we basically want that point to match up with the roof there we go And actually, we know for a fact that this used to join up with the side, so let's get it back joining to the side. Like that. Alright, now look at that. Our Parthenon is coming along beautifully. Look at it. We've got the colonnades, we've got the inside walls. Um, one thing that is maybe worth doing now, actually, is to start. Um, adding some textures just just for the time being to make it look a bit nicer um, so we can start dividing things up in different colors um, so what we're going to do is use the texturing tool which is this one here the paint backup so I think um, judging from this kind of reconstruction I think this is all marble that's marble I'm not sure about the walls but we'll give it a marble look at the moment and then we can change it later uh, I don't think it was with stucco so so what we're going to do is we're going to select this one the paint tool now the paint tool has lots of different materials that are already built in um, so we could just go for this there's probably a stone one there we go stone stone vein grey or maybe this one here no that's crazy paving okay so we draw it like that see it's okay it doesn't look perfect I have to say um, so what I may do instead is make my own so if you click on create material um, you can actually upload a photo um, where do they put it I put it in desktop Dropbox free modeling guide free modeling guide images here we go so this one here um, press ok so we're gonna try painting it like that uh, it's still not perfect but for what we're trying to do, it will be fine for now. So we're going to select the entire model because the entire model is the same color. Uh, and we're just going to double click and there we go, it goes everywhere. Ah, so what's happening here is it's tiling, which means that basically it's repeating this texture over and over and over and over and over again. Um, so one thing we can do to change this, we can change the size of it. So we could do, for example, four. And look, it's already looking a bit better, uh, but maybe let's do it eight. Um, it still looks tiled but we can change that later we can edit um, the model using uh, something like Photoshop um, to make it look proper okay time being though look at that that looks much better as it is already um, it looks much more like stone uh, I mean these are massive textures they shouldn't be that large but um, it's looking good it's looking very good okay so that's the lower level Ooh. Uh, it takes about an hour to do that, um, which is not as much as I would have thought, really. Um, okay, so a few things to do. First of all, I've noticed that this is not quite high enough. We need the same height as the columns. Um, so now we need to build the roof. Um, 
So there's two ways to do this. You can do this just the purely aesthetical way, which is you basically just show what you can see, which means we make just the tiles on top and the sort of inside out, but we don't worry about um, you know the wooden beams and all that kind of stuff that would keep it up. Um, that's that's usually fine. Um, it's good if you're just using a presentation. I tend to usually build the entire thing from the ground up, even things you can't technically see because it helps with interpretation. Once you're making the model, it makes you understand that certain things don't quite fit together and certain things aren't quite um, aren't quite right. So I like to go from the base to the top slowly. So what we, what we need to do here is first of all, as you can see what we've got, Let's look at this carefully. This is another reconstruction. So you've got a course of stone which goes across all the different things. Um, so maybe we should do that first. Um, let's do that course of stone just to make it, um, let's go from simple to complex. So we'll just build this um, stone block. Again, height here is not going to be good, but that'll be fine. So we go across. We probably wanted a bit more beefy now let's see how does that look compared to the image not that one the other one half and long cross i think that's pretty accurate oh that's something we forgot there's a, a square slab um before each column okay well that's something we can change now before we go into more modeling because that's going to cause problems later on um so we're going to do square and we're going to go up. It's a nice and simple square, make it a component. Um, you see, like after a bit, you really can do this so quickly. Um, then we can basically control X, that's cut out. Now, all of these columns, even the small ones, are all interconnected as far as I'm aware. Yeah, so all we need to do is add it into one and then we don't need to do anything more. And that's why it's very useful um, to use this kind of um, component building. Um, so I'm going to do control B, paste it on top of here. All right. Now we want it to be, we don't, okay. So first of all, we want it to be a bit larger. Um, now, but the thing I was looking at is that we do, we want to make sure so the problem is we're adding stuff to here and that's obviously going to be hidden away. So in order to make that less obvious, I'm going to basically place this below like that at the right height. And then we're going to alter both the columns and that, the size to make it match. I think that's probably right. Maybe just slightly higher, otherwise there's a bit of a gap. There we go. Uh, does that look right? Uh, I think that's a, the top thing is a bit large on this side. So we'll change that. Um, there we go. Yeah, I think that looks probably a bit better. Or maybe even the other side, let's see. Yeah, why not? Um, so we want to change this a bit too. All right, let's look at that. Phew, that looks much better. Okay, so what's this What's this colonnade doing then? It's coming, I think, a bit further out. Um, yeah, I think this is meant to be a bit more like this. Okay. Some of these ones have gone further back, I'm not sure why. So we're going to reset those to where they were meant to be. So let's go for that, that, up, that, that, and move it a bit forward. There we go. Okay, so let's do this all the way across. So it's exactly like we did for this inside division. We're going to do it for these columns as well. So we're going to gra um, grab our line tool. And we're going to do these should come out a bit more maybe. Um, so first of all, we extend this to about there, and the same on the other side. All right. Uh, 
down to about there and again down to about there okay and then we basically can pull all the way across from here all the way across down here and make it the same length perfect and then finally we just need to do connect these ones in to go down like that from here to here look at that that's our first course of bricks well of course of stone blocks i guess uh, we can delete this line here because it's not particularly good all right um so we're gonna color this in as well keep it consistent actually these ones what we really want it to look like is blocks so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create uh create material i'm going to make a new one using the same thing but we're going to make it so first of all, i'm going to color in okay so it's material two um so we're going to color this as material two and then we're going to make this into say five or maybe three even there you go that actually looks like blocks doesn't it um i can edit this in photoshop to actually make um yeah, i think five was probably the best one to actually make this sort of coincide in the right spot um, but again for the time being we're not looking at that accuracy quite yet we're just trying to um create the thing but you know that looks that looks like blocks rather than just a one consistent line one thing you can do just so you know is if you click on a surface you can do something called uh what's it gone texture there we go so you can position the texture like this you can like change it around move it around or for example um yeah there's lots of different things you can do and that may be quite good and there's lots of tools which i'm discovering at the moment which are very very useful and i would recommend looking into uh, but again for what we're trying to do here it doesn't matter uh, what else have we got here we got another row going in through here and i can't the problem with these reconstructions it's difficult to know what happens is this just a straight line or does it connect up i think that finishes there i think this is just line going across here so what we're going to do is first of all make this into a component and then we're going to create a line just a simple line going from here to here like that um and then do the same height and just add the same texture and make it into a component done and then this one we can copy from here to all the way across down here perfect um all right so what what else do we have i suspect um by looking at this i suspect this comes up more um so a lot some of this reconstruction is obviously a bit conjectural you have to um basically recreate what isn't there anymore which obviously can have problems and complications um but i would if you're doing a lot of sound research and you're very good at uh, recording what you're doing as well i think that's good to um it's good enough to basically get the amount of detail that um that you want and i don't think you have to worry too much about it being perfect if you put the groundwork in before and made sure that it's fine um, I don't know how this will come up for example um, I suspect there's probably going to be I don't know though I was going to say some stone coming across here but that that fits nicely there but this wouldn't fit nicely to the wall so I think I'm just going to lift these up a bit more I'm going to have four massive columns in here um, so we'll go to the side and lift these up there we go okay so that's the first layer okay um so it's looking it's looking it's coming along okay so now we need to bake the roof and the roof i remember was a bit of an interesting one um so you've got these sort of cells like um constructions oh this comes out doesn't it okay let's see that first of all so we're gonna go back and modify this and I, we want it at the same height as the columns i think oh it doesn't really matter um, so you want it more or less that height. You see, it sort of it guides you 
across so you know exactly you can get the right height um, which is good um, then we go from here from wherever that dot was from there all the way across here and from wherever it was here all the way across so it does it's very good with guidelines it helps you with um, making sure you put the you know the dots in the right space and everything's symmetrical and which is obviously a great help when you're trying to reconstruct stuff okay so then we want to protrude these out a bit not much it's just to give it that extra level which um what do we protrude that as as much as um so let's say we take it out about 20 centimeters why not 20 centimeters sounds about right so we go here do another 20 centimeters i actually just write it in it's going to be easier oh no it's too oh no i'm writing it all wrong oh dear maybe not then that doesn't seem to like it oh it should be minus 20 i see okay let's write minus 20 no still not working uh i'll just do it by the tape measure so i'm following what tape measure says at the bottom um oh dear i'm, I'm really messing this up so this this actually went back to what it was so that should be Right, we're gonna try again. Let's try writing it. it. It wants to go the other way for some reason. Um, let's try zooming in. Come on. <laughs> it's trying to get up very, there we go, 20. And then we want to discard 20. There we go, and then we can just pull this to the same height as that one. Uh, it's just adding a bit more texture, a bit more interesting stuff going on um, this can go another 20 ah there we go and this can go 20 there we go so we've added a bit more to it a bit more freeze to it okay All right um, roof so first of all what I'm noticing here is that you've got the this solid brick that we've got, and then there's that which is the freeze. So we need to add that as well. Um, so what I would probably do, um, let's think about it. Yeah, so it's probably twice the height of this in total. So what we can probably do is copy this upwards. And this is when we make it unique. So we right clicking, oh yeah, I press the wrong button. Um, so we right click on this and we press make unique. So now if we were to change this one, you can see the bottom one doesn't change with it. And this is very important because now we can modify just the top one. Um, so first of all, uh, as you may have seen, there's a tiny bit of piece coming out. So we'll do that. Um, pretty much the same as we've literally just done. Actually this can come up a bit, can't it? So first of all, I've just noticed this isn't quite right. This needs to go up a bit more. Otherwise it's gonna overlap. Um, so we click on it and we want to give it a little bit of a border at the bottom, just enough to make it look a bit better. There we go. And let's go around here. And down around here, all the way down here. And then from here, all the way down here. Perfect. Uh, that's created a surface as you'll notice. We just delete that, that's fine. Then we can pull this out as much as we want. We'll do 10 centimeters. I think that looks about right, maybe a bit more, let's say another 10. So 20 centimeters in total. And then obviously pull this one out, 20 centimeters. Oh my God, this is so difficult, 2.2, there we go. Um, and down here.
and finally down here. Okay. There we go, that's adding a bit to it. What else have we got? I think uh, it sort of does the same on the top, but that doesn't matter because that's gonna, uh, that comes across, so that's fine. Uh, we do need to do these, which um, I can't remember what they're, what they're called, they've got a specific name, but we need to do those as well. So to do those, we probably want, to, 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 it's just three lines going up, and there's these little things at the bottom as well. Um, so probably again, we should probably measure the distance between one and the next. Um, but but we won't. Um, again, if you want to do that, please do. It'll be much more accurate than what I'm going to be doing. Um, but I don't have the time necessarily. Um, this will be easy if we make that into component as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this space into the component create and then on top of it we're going to be um, making these triglyphs so we do that and then we probably want it to be how many how many centimeters before so we say that's 20 centimeters it's quite a lot but fair enough uh, this goes down like that uh, as you can notice Although I am actually going on top of this line, within the within this context, that line doesn't actually exist. This line I'm currently going on uh, because that's part of a component, so that's a complete separate entity. So I need to go over it again. Okay, um, so we've got this. We'll protrude them um, pretty much the same as that, and the probably the best way to do this. Oh, let's see what what would it look like. So I think what we want to do is basically, um, I think rather than resizing them, which will be a bit of a nuisance, we're going to do this from here. So we'll go four centimeters across, do that. Then we'll go four centimeters this way and do that. Then four centimeters this way. Do that and four centimeters this way and do that and, and then four centimeters this way and again four centimeters this way and do that okay and then you may have already guessed this we're going to pull these down so they disappear i remember the first time i did this parthenon i spent ages trying to do this so it just shows how much what well, you know practice makes easier okay there you go that looks uh, that looks about right i think that may be a bit high maybe um or maybe i think these may come around a bit maybe a bit more um so i suspect what's happening is that both of this is just a bit too high so i'm going to lower everything down um maybe not that much that's a bit too much but i think oh that didn't help at all um let's try it again Lower it to about that. I think that's probably a bit more, a bit more accurate. Maybe let's see what it looks like. Yeah, I'd say that's probably better. Uh, maybe we can also extend these a bit. So I'm going to make these into a component again. Create, and I'm going to pull them a bit to the side. Yeah, yeah. Why not? That looks fine. Oh, no, no, wrong, wrong, wrong. Uh, slightly less, maybe. Okay, um, what else is there? There's something else underneath, isn't there? There's a little... Yeah, my image isn't particularly zoomed in, but I think it's just a little line, really. I think we can get away with doing just a line. Um, actually, it may be worth doing a line on top as well. It seems like that's quite important. So we'll lower this for now, and then we can modify them later. We'll go back into here. What's the height of this? That's seven centimeters down, so that's seven centimeters down from here. We'll do a line coming across. And another line coming across here. And 
and another line coming across here. And finally a line coming across here. All right, we delete that as well again. And once again, we pull it out, but luckily we just need to do that like that now. And that'd be much nicer. I hope the navigation tools are now um, easy to understand. It's literally just, yeah, rotate, zoom out, rotate again, zoom in again, click the other tool and then, and then pull it like that. There we go. Okay. Right, let's see. So this now needs to go up a bit more um, to just get it to the same height. And we need to do that thing at the bottom as well, so we'll, we'll build that separately. Um, not sure exactly what this is meant to be, but I think that will do really. And then we can pull this out a bit more. So we don't want it to be the same, we want it to be less apparently. Maybe a tiny bit more. Something like that, I think that will do. Um, let's make this a component as well. Um, is that pretty much centered? I think that looks centered. Um, then to make this easy, we'll make these two. Oh, that did make a component. Make a component, create. Now to make things easy, we'll grab both of these and make a component because we're going to be copying and pasting these quite a bit. Uh, let's give it a bit of color as well. Um, and then we can start copy and pasting them across. So we want them to be more or less same distribution. Okay, these are not copying as nice as I wanted them to. So we're gonna just try that again. So if we copy from on the dot, then we just need to drag it. All right, that looks pretty good. Are those pretty even, do we think? Let's look at that picture again. Mm, I'd say there's more space in between them than there is, um, than they have themselves. Okay, so then we just drag this more. Like that. And then more. Again, I don't quite like how they're a bit uneven. Um, what I may do is actually I may let's cheat a bit. Let's make them look better. Um, does this have one at the end? Yes, it does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and if this was measured, then this would obviously be. All, all I'm doing at the moment would be all wrong, essentially. Um, but because we're not measuring them, then it's fine. Um, so this last one can go a bit more to the right so it fits in with that. And maybe this one too, so it doesn't look too uneven. Wrong. Okay. How does that look? Look at that. Oh, what have I done? Perfect. So obviously you want to get this to the other side and this is when we're going to use the rotate tool. Um, we're going to get one of these um, and we're going to copy it across. So we can, obviously the problem is we can't get this, if we were to just copy it straight here, it would be the wrong orientation. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy it here. Okay, so we just copied across at the moment and then we get to get the rotate tool, which is this one here. And the rotate tool is basically used to rotate an object, you know, in any direction you want it to. Um, one of the good things about it is you can um, make it a bit better. So for example, we can get, so if for example, you go on a flat surface and you press shift, it will keep that orientation. So we're gonna click the button there, the button here, and then we're gonna drag it to there. See what I did? So you give it three points, you give it the, the center from where you're going to do, the point from which you're starting and the point where you're ending. And 
you know, the Rotate tool is, it takes a minute to master, but then once you've got it, then it's very, very useful. So it's worth spending that minute to work out exactly how you're going to use it. Um, but for that, so as you can see, we've got um, that one there, and we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to copy it across, all the way across. It's obviously going to take a minute, um, but it's not much we can do. Um, again, we probably would want to do distance a bit better, but um, I want to keep this video below the you know seven hours that it would end up being. Yeah, I think like a generally good accuracy model, you can probably knock it out in in you know eight hours really. Um, this this kind of modeling is obviously much rougher, so it'll probably take us two hours to do the entire thing. Uh, at least that's what I'm aiming for. Um, obviously, you want to put more detail into it um, if you're doing it for project. Um, right, you need that. Right, and then we do it once more. Roughly. There, does that make sense? Maybe a bit more. A bit more to the right. Maybe a bit more even. Yeah, good. Uh, oh, look, perfect. That nearly matches up perfectly, so we'll just extend it till there. And then we're going to grab these last three, which we don't need. Go like that. Delete. Done. So now we've got two sides done. Um, I'm just going to send a quick message, and I will return to uh, doing this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you may have to wait a minute. Mm. Okay, back to it. So we've done two sides, we obviously need to do two more. Um, so we'll start off from over here. This one, again, we, we basically have to go into the component, copy what we want to get, and we want to get this point here. So if you copy, oh dear, I didn't copy it, did I? Um, if you get, you see I'm basically copying this point to here because that's where I want it. That point's the one I'm gonna start off with. I'm then gonna rotate basically that same point and that sort of keeps it nice and um, steady. So I'm, gonna, I'm pressing shift at the moment to make it look good. And then uh, yeah, that's done. Uh, so we've got, that's a new one. And we obviously need to copy it across, so we need to select this and let's go for copy. So that looks about right. Copy two of them. Oh, this is quite repetitive, I realise, but it's what we need to do, unfortunately, to make it look good. Let's just make sure that it looks consistent throughout. I'd say that looks fine. So it's about four by the time you get to the third column. That's the same. So uh, the distance is not too bad. Okay, um, what next from here? All the way across to here. Uh, copy them all. So this is slightly over. Delete this, delete this. This one's, these ones are a bit too close together, that's the problem. Um, so we need to, to pull up slightly apart. Uh, I, I think that's fine. I don't, I, you know, we could spend ages trying to get those accurate, but it looks okay. Um, down here, we've got this thing. Uh, we need to copy the last ones across. 
you could also rotate an entire line of these. Actually, that's maybe something that's worth looking at. Um, so what I'm going to do is just copy. How many do we need? Three, four, four some, something like that. We need about that many. Um, so we're going to then copy all of these from here to here. And then we're going to do the same thing with the rotate tool. So we're going to rotate from here. We select that dot and we select the last one across. And then we go Oh dear, something wrong. Uh, didn't look very good. We'll do that again. So we select oh, from here, that point, and this point, and we rotate it all the way across to this line. Yes, uh, we probably need one more. So we cut this one across. So that saved us a lot of time as well. Um, so it was worth looking into. Uh, and we could probably pull this one off a bit more. Um, just a bit more this way. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, okay. Okay, right. So we want to do the roof as well. Um, so first of all, as you can see, there's this sort of cell-like things that seem to be crossed and they seem to be separated by um, pieces of um, of stone. So um, the best way to do a piece of stone seem to be matching that. Okay, so we'll do this with a few components. Um, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to basically um, create something that we can copy and paste. We're going to do the cells first of all. So we do that. And I'm speeding up now because I don't want to repeat the same things over and over again. And also, I need to go in a bit. So I need to do this fairly soon. So do that. And then, um, what's that got? It's got two per row. So you want to divide this in half. As you can see, it gives you also the midpoint and the end point, which is very useful. And then it's what across, what's it? One, two, three, four, five across. Okay, so we need to measure this. 7.85. Actually, this may be easier if we measure the entire thing properly. Um, so if we do it just as an example, we can have, you know, I'd say, you know, 10 centimeters long, 10 meters long, sorry. Um, and we'll scale this down in a minute, but just to give us, I don't know, maybe five across, no, uh, 10 and 10 and four, because they seem to be squared. Nearly there. Ten. Can I just write it? Ten. That's four. That doesn't do it, obviously. It would be too easy. Okay, so that clearly is not working for us. So we're just going to make it with lines. Lines are going to be easy to make. Um, so we just need this to ten. This one to uh, four. It, it's going to be much easier than what I'm trying to do here and then that comes here and this comes here uh, and then we divide it by half and then every uh, two meters down here we basically have a line across um, actually we can do this by midpoints so these are basically just like you know very simple um, cells that we're going to be working with. Um, okay, so that's still done. We want to probably give it a little bit of a border. So, you know, 30 centimeters in, we do that. 30 centimeters in this way, 0 0.3. We got that. And the same here, 0 0.3. So you may be seeing what we're trying to do here. We're basically just trying to create a grid that we can then exp extrude 0 0.3 that way. Very nice. Um, okay, we also need to do it in the middle. 0 0.3. 
these kind of things are a bit fiddly but they come out quite nice so we might as well do them properly and we want here oh, wrong wrong line Just doing like as you can see the same thing over and over again. There's probably an easier way to do this as well. Um, I just haven't thought of it. It's just you know trying to think what the oh no I've done that wrong. What the easiest solution for the common problem is. That's all basically really modern is. Um, so this is coming on quite nicely. We've got so many lines that we need to delete though because we've oh yeah done too many. All right, okay, so obviously a lot of these lines we can delete, so we'll start doing that now because that's gonna be much easier to do in a minute. Actually, I can probably just grab a load. Yeah, oh dear, we've deleted things underneath it. We don't want that, so what we want to do is probably just delete. Yeah, I mean, there was definitely a better way to do this. I just didn't really think of one, but yeah, I mean, this is, oh dear. Whoa, okay. Uh, sorry about this. Um, I should have thought about this earlier. But it'll look good in a minute. Um, so it'll be worth it. Can't think of a better way, unfortunately. Um, So it just has to be done in a certain way, which is just annoying, but that's the way it is. So let's delete this, delete this, delete this, delete, delete this. I mean, we could just pull everything up individually, but I feel like if you've got unnecessary lines, it's worth getting rid of them rather than just keeping them in the model. They just create complications with textures and all kinds of stuff. Um, so it is definitely worth just, you know, deleting them individually, even though it does take ages. Okay, we should be more with us there. Oh, come on. <laughs> I keep doing the wrong thing, as you may notice. Come on, come on. Okay, more than halfway there. Oh. Right. The good thing is once we've done this, there'll be a lot of copying and pasting and not much more. Which is obviously very nice. Okay, come on. Last few lines. Okay, see what we got there? We got the start of our cell. Now, we're gonna extrude this a bit. And the thing is, I was looking at it, and basically we want this, but the opposite way around. Now, there's a few ways we could do this. We could basically, I think the easiest is just gonna be to um, put this upside down. We're gonna lift these up a bit to make them a bit better. It's, you you don't usually want just surfaces, you want to um, create blocks because surfaces create all kinds of polymer textures, um, but if you've got a block, it's much easier to deal with. So here we go. So we'll make component, create, and then we're going to rotate it around so that it's not going to cause us problems. Whoop. And we do like this. And it sort of disappears because it's gone underneath, but then we just lift it up. And there we have it. So actually that has made surfaces, which is annoying. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to fill all that in by doing that. That didn't seem to work. Ah, uh, we'll be fine. It's not going to create too many problems. 
Okay, um, so now this is the point where we need to use different textures because this isn't the same color as the walls. What we do seem to have is we've got these, I, I'd say, let's, let's try decorating them a bit. So we're gonna go to the underside of them. Maybe it's worth lifting them up a bit more. Yeah, so we'll lift this up a bit more. And we're going to color the underneath of them. We're going to just do um, one of the basic colors from here, just to sort of give it, um, let's just go for colors. Um, just for now, we'll add more textures later on. Um, so let's go for maybe that. Okay, that's obviously colored everything because we select a component of the individual parts. We probably actually want to not do that. I'm just going to click into it. Uh, actually, let's go for maybe this one. Yeah, that's okay. Nope, nope, wrong. Um, there we go, just adding a bit of colour to it. That looks quite nice. Um, I wonder if we should maybe make it look a bit like wood. I think this may be wood. Um, I do have some wood textures, maybe. Or we can just see if they've got any here. They've got wood. Yeah, why not? This doesn't look particularly good, but that'll be fine. So we'll basically select everything. We'll do this again done so i think that for now will be sufficient now what i've also noticed is that if you look at this you've got stone on either side of it um now we'll probably put that in now um so this is going to slot in Um, basically in between for example here and here or here and here so what I what I am thinking maybe the best thing to do is to what does it look like here uh, let's fit these in first I think that's gonna be nicer to look at and then we can work on from there meanwhile these need to go up again we need um, another copy of these and I think these also like there's lots of decorations um, but mainly it just comes out a bit so we're gonna um, do that we're gonna uh, make this unique and then we're going to go into it and we're going to draw lines across like we did before seven centimeters down Oop, wrong place uh, let's do I guess zero point zero Point seven. Enter. Done. That's it. I feel that's wrong. That's definitely not where the line is meant to be. Um, okay, let's just do it by 2.6. Zero point seven. There we go. And we obviously want the one at the bottom as well. So that'll be another zero point seven. We go and we go around and we do the same. And from here down to here. Other side. From here to here. And again from down here to down here. And finally, from down here to here, and from down here to here. And we'll extrude these by, what do we do first? 20 centimeters, wasn't it? <laughs> it's so difficult to get that just perfect. Done. And then we'll extrude this to the same. Then we do this for another zero. Point two, and the same with this. Rotate it round. Go for zero point two, and this one too. Let's go for zero point two. Oh, actually, we can just see it from here, can't we? And finally, down here. 
um, we just go 0 0.2 enter and the same like that all right and then we copy this over from here all the way across to the same thing which we have over here all right ah so those need to go down again because we did the same with the other ones um all right that's fine um we just need to grab all that we've done this and this and this and this and just lower everything um with an s to the same height as that one there okay right so i think i'm gonna have to go at the moment um so i'm gonna keep this as part one of um hopefully just two videos i don't want to do a lot more but at the moment this is looking pretty good i think uh and I've, i hope that it will make sense um, I'll try and leave a bit of a gap between when I do this and the next one just so people can send in their comments and let me know if there's anything particular you want to uh, look at um, but until next time uh, let me know what you want to see if there's anything that's not particularly clear I've gone too quick or, or just done wrong I don't know um, let me know and I'll continue this uh, next time but thank you for watching I know this has been a very long video but hopefully it's been quite um, educational Go and check out uh, my blog arcphotogrammetry.com um, where there's all kinds of interesting articles. I'm currently writing a lot of theoretical stuff um, but I've also done a lot of practical as well. I've talked about photogrammetry, um, fluid modelling, all this kind of stuff. It's worth looking out at. Um, and yeah, so thank you for watching and I'll see you for part two. Bye.